Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Finn on the Road. Today I'm reaching you from the wonderful port town of Al Alhatiras. And my plan right now is to go all the way that way and get a ticket to Tangier. I'm not leaving today, I want to leave tomorrow, so I'm really hoping that there's spots available on the ferry. Woo! Yes! Bag secured. I'm going tomorrow. Ah, that was so easy. That was so easy. I just went up to the ticket office. There's one person in front of me, got a ticket, asked for a ticket. Uh, they spoke English, thank God. Um, ticket to Tangier for tomorrow, 8.45 a.m. I'll be on the, on the ferry and I'll be in Africa by noon. I am so excited, so excited. So right now, go to find a bus to Gibraltar and head there, climb up, see the rock of Gibraltar. Maybe, I, I might even be able to see Morocco from the top. We'll see. It's kind of a cloudy day, a little overcast. There it is, Algeciras, La Linea. Two euros fifty to get to La Linea, which is about 45 minutes. It's a pretty good price, honestly. I was expecting it to be closer to five, maybe even ten euros. Just like that, I've arrived in La Linea. And just up there is the Rock of Gibraltar. I'm just gonna get my way, make my way inside and get some food once I'm inside. It might be a bit more expensive. I'm pretty sure they use pounds there uh, rather than euros because it is sort of part of the UK, I think. I don't know the politics behind that, but. Well, that passport control is just about the easiest thing I've ever done. Went in, got a quick stamp, and that was it. And right now I'm standing right in the middle of an airstrip. So I guess uh, it said no stopping. So as you walk across this, you're not allowed to stop at all because there could be a plane that comes to land at any moment. You have to get out of the way. Oh, I think one might be coming now actually. Ah. I'm gonna walk all the way to the end, get a ticket and then walk on the top of that ridge and hopefully get down somewhere over here. But I need to find some food first because I'm hungry. There it is. For a quick bite. <clears throat> they have a Costa coffee here, British classic, so probably the biggest cappuccino I could get. And this is quite a bit of cappuccino, so this should give me some energy. And then a couple of chocolate croissants, and that would be good for a few hours. This whole main street is very British. As you can see, fish and chips, I mean there's a Costa coffee, there's every other restaurant that I see has like, oh, British fish and chips, British chicken tikka masala. Marks and Spencers too. <laughs> All the comforts at home for a British expat, I guess. Now that's a view. Mediterranean steps this way. I decided to take the long route because I get to see more and I get a good view of the mountain just on the other side of uh, the Strait of Gibraltar here. That mountain and this rock, the Rock of Gibraltar, make up the two pillars that, that are the Pillars of Hercules that kind of stand on kind of like a gate on either side of the strait here. Uh, like a, I guess a gateway to the Mediterranean. Learn something new every day, especially when subscribed to Finn on the Road. <laughs> oh man, that is more like it. Ever since Switzerland, I've been wanting more of a hike. And this is doing it for me. Woohoo! Oh my goodness. Whew. Not a good day to wear pants. Very hot. Oh. And I'm going up all these, these steps. Oh, what is that? What the heck? What was that? Oh, it's a little bird. Oh, okay. It scared the crap out of me. Goat's hair twin caves. Here, there's this one, and there's another one over here too. One sec. Ooh, let the light adjust a bit. And it is quite steep. GoPro may be a little bit deceiving. Ugh. Here we go.
Um, let me have a bit more light. Uh, I don't really know what's in there. I'm not gonna go find out though. Oh man, there's spiders everywhere in here. And, fl and flies, okay, I'm getting out, I'm getting out. Something tells me that most people don't opt to take this path. It's definitely more difficult and kind of overgrown here too. There's a cable car you can take for 20, uh, 20 pounds. So uh, to hell with that. No way I'm taking a cable car. No way I'm spending 20 pounds on a cable car. When I got these bad boys, they work just fine. And they're free. I am at the top, made it all the way up the Mediterranean steps, and it is windy. This is a moment when I wish that I had a mic and a muffler, because it's definitely going to be muffled. Ta-da! And some history up here too. Oh, here has battery. There's an engine room. Oh, I thought that was a real person first. Oh my gosh, that scared me. It is narrow. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, at first I was a little bit skeptical about paying uh, 16 pounds for this, but this is pretty damn cool. I had no idea this was even here. Pump room, ammunition hoist, shell and cartri cartridge store. So this has got to be the ammunition hoist here. And then the shell storage is in there. So I guess the gun is up top. And I don't know how to get up there because you'd think it would be over here until you get here and it's locked. Maybe I can't go up there. Back through the spooky tunnel. Oh, this is the fun part. Okay. Yikes. He's just chilling. Doesn't even need to flap his wings. Okay, I looked it up and apparently this is the highest point on the entire rock of Gibraltar here. O'Hara's battery. Now this is one massive gun. Weight of charge, 109 pounds. Jesus. This view though, oh my gosh. It's definitely the best view because you see both sides because we're kind of on this point that comes out into the ocean here. And you see the left side. You see Morocco over there. And then you see the little bay over here too. Tangier is down the coast, somewhere over there. So it's gonna be about a hour and a half, two hour ferry ride. It's a lot faster down there, that's for sure. Very regal. Full of himself. That is so cool. Huh. First of many, I guess. This is St. Michael's Caves here. Oh my gosh. Wow. Some of these stalactites are incredible. They're meters, this one's probably 10 meters long. It connects to a stalagmite on the ground. For those who don't know, stalagmites grow up, stalactites grow down. No entry. <laughs> this is the best I can do. Oh well, I have to come back with a permit next time, I guess. This is called the Awakening Light Show.
Well, that show was pretty cool. But uh, it's time to say goodbye to St. Christopher's Games. Or no, St. Michael's Games. And I'm gonna find more monkeys too. At least that's the plan. <laughs> oh. There's one. Oh, did, did he steal something? Yeah. Oh. Hey, buddy. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey. The story goes that St. Michael's Caves, um, people used to believe that they were endless, that they were bottomless. You could just go all the way down. And actually, like a long time ago, people used to believe it linked uh, mainland Africa and, uh, and Europe too. So you could just, if you got to the bottom, you could walk all the way across. And the story of how those monkeys got here is that they came through that cave. Obviously, that's not true. Another story goes that if the monkeys ever leave the rock of Gibraltar, then the rock won't won't be uh, in British hands anymore. So it's important that they stick around, but you know what? I don't think they're going anywhere. They're well fed, they steal people's food. Not a bad gig for them. We got a skywalk right here. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's a long way down. I'm not leaning any more than that. Oh. Wow. Got a very healthy fear of heights. Not nothing crazy, but you know, but natural. And this is um, a little, little unnerving standing right here. And this glass. Oh, there's four. It's four panes thick, so it's fine. But uh, oh, holding this GoPro with two hands. These little guys really are fearless. Oh, hey, how's it going? He tried to grab my backpack. I think he maybe smelled my other chocolate croissant here. Okay, that's gross. Where are your manners? You're on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the monkey den. And they are all over the place here. Oh my gosh. Babies. At the top of uh, the rock here, where the cable car lets you out if you decide to take the cable car. And I had to get a smoothie because I am low on energy. This one's got pineapple, coconut, I think banana, I don't know. It's kind of warm, but it tastes good, so. Like seven pounds. Ugh. Not my smartest purchase, but I wanted it, so. It's almost five o'clock, and I'm, I, uh, I wanna make the most of the day. Make the most of the time that I have left. When there's a car behind me. Uh-oh. How patriotic. This is the Great Seeds Tunnels. And as I go through here, I'll learn a bit more and tell you about it. The only problem, I've got 10% left on my battery, so I'm gonna have to use it. Oh, the focus is gonna have to use it kind of sparingly. Okay, so these tunnels were built to get extra cannons and fortifications out onto the sides of the mountain walls to protect, uh, well, to fight the Spanish. It was the British who excavated them. And the Great Siege lasted three years starting in 1779. And this is really the perfect vantage point for firing against the, the French and uh, Spanish armies that would have been situated just down there where that airstrip is now. It is so perfect from up here. I mean, the range that these cannons must have gotten is insane. Not to mention that scaling these cliffs are, is pretty much impossible unless you have modern day rock climbing equipment. But uh, this is... This is a really cool exhibit. Oh, I wish I had more battery. I'd show a lot more of it. I'll do my best, guys. Maybe film on my phone if I have to. This big circular cutout of a room here. It would be perfect for defending against a siege. I mean, look at this. You have views all different sides. And these cannons are massive. And apparently these barrels are the original, like the gun barrels, are the original ones. Um, what they're standing on or sitting on, those aren't originals. They were taken apart and scrapped. But barrels, original. Almost 250 years old. That's pretty impressive. Seems that I've reached the end of the tunnels, which I thought was, was going to go a lot longer than this, but apparently not. A little place where some little 
Little seagulls, little peepers. Oh, and some big ones too. Made their home. Oh nice. So you can access you can access the top of the notch up this way, which is like a really important strategic uh, location during the Great Siege. I thought that we could actually go up and see it, but apparently not. Unless maybe we go back this way and there's a, a different I don't know, a different entrance. I didn't see one. Here's the view from the top of the Moorish Castle. And to be honest, I'm kind of glad that it's not that big because I am hungry. It is almost 6.30. I still need to get back. Um, so I'm in a bit of a pickle right now. Um, this is the only way out. Here, if I can get... And there's two monkeys guarding the way out. <laughs> I guess one is the parent. Okay, this is really sad, but it looks like the one monkey on the right has a baby and the baby I think is dead. And the monkey on the left, I think, is the dad. And I can't get through. I try to get through, and he just chased me. Like, oh, I, <laughs> he just chased me back here, and I locked myself behind here. His, like, his teeth are not this big. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna get out. I made it out of my little predicament there. That was one of the scariest moments of my life. Um, that monkey chased me for probably a distance of two or three blocks. Um, I was just hiding behind the gate and the mother with the dead baby, very sad, but she walked away and I thought, okay, maybe he'll be uh, more friendly now. So I just walked out, didn't look at him and kept walking and I just hear a scramble and he's chasing me. He just starts chasing me. I had to run out of the castle and I, was, I just ran out ah! <laughs> up the street and eventually there was a car coming and I just ran by the car and he stopped behind the car and went back. So. Oh my God, his teeth are massive and he's scary. That was, that was a scary moment for me. Um, so I'm going to uh, the city center uh, of Gibraltar, making my way back, hopping on the bus, back to Al Hathiras. Peace out Gibraltar, until next time. This place is called La Taller or La, La Taller maybe. Anyways, L-A space T-A-L-L-E-R in Al Hathiras. Here's the food, ribs, uh, mashed potatoes, and veggies. Not a huge portion, but still do the trick. And it looks like there's a lot of meat on those ribs too. So. Okay, I caved and I got a dessert. It's like a flan um, made with egg yolk and then with a meringue on the side. And this is um, a brown sweet wine from Cadiz. Oh my gosh. So I was just gonna not film myself eating this, but it is... <laughs> It's so good. I don't know if it's the dessert wine talking or the beer talking or me being tired, but this is just like... Mm. Oh, it's so good. Like the flan is sweet, sugary, but not too sweet. And the meringue is like, oh, it's more like a whipped cream than meringue, honestly. It's light, it's egg yolks and sugar like whipped and then uh, they toast to the top. So. It's just fantastic, this whole, this meal was great. The ribs were fantastic. Mashed potatoes and red peppers were so tasty. This is like one of the best desserts I've had in a long time. And the sweet one, it's thick, it's syrupy. It almost reminds me of Chambord liquor, which is like a rasp, I think raspberry liquor, like it's French. But this, the sweet wine, it, sweet wine is way better. Oh my god! I'm a happy camper. After this, I don't even know if I want to edit. I might just go back and sleep. I wish I was kidding. I don't even want to eat it. It's a masterpiece. Every bite that I take, I just have this tinge of sadness. It just strikes me because I know it'll be one last bite that I can take. It's no secret that I'm a sucker for good food. But that place, oh my, <laughs> that was one of the best, one of the best desserts I've had in a long, long time. And trust me, I've eaten a lot of very tasty desserts. I don't know what they did different, but go to, go there, La Taller, La Taller in Algeciras, recommended for sure. Well, today on the whole was a massive success. Um, we got to see a whole ton of history at Gibraltar, amazing sights, climbed to the top of the rock, saw Africa for the first time on my trip, saw monkeys, got chased by a monkey, 
had some amazing food. That flan was, oh, just to die for. Out of this world. Another great day. Tomorrow I'm waking up early. I have my, uh, my ferry to Tangier at 8.45 in the morning. Uh, so I gotta go to bed, it's almost midnight. And as per usual, make sure to like, subscribe, and go and uh, follow my Instagram as well. Same thing, fit on the road, spelled the same way. Check me out, I really appreciate all the support, and I'll see you all in the next one.